Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at Luke 2, um, starting to read from verse 22 till 38, so let's read this together. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms, praised Praise God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave, thank she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. So first of all, the thing I noticed as I read this passage is it can't be by accident that I was given this passage where it talks about a pair of two young pigeons. Um, I recently got married to Ellie and so you could call us a pair of two young pigeons, I suppose, although it is spelled differently. Um, but I really love this passage and it really does speak to me um, in the sense of being patient and waiting, we see here two examples. We see Simeon and we see Anna, uh, a man and a woman who were waiting for a long time um, for the promise that God had given them to see the fulfilment of that promise. And um, I can really relate to that. Um, some of you may know, I finally, on the 8th of August, uh, on the 4th attempt, uh, was able to marry Ellie. Um, we were hoping to get married in May and obviously because of current, of current circumstances that wasn't possible and I think we really had to have patience during that time so I can totally relate to um, where these guys were in terms of um, waiting. Obviously the Messiah um, that Israel has been waiting for, they've been waiting a lot longer than I had to uh, for my wedding um, but equally the, the emotions are, are the same. The, the roller coaster, the, uh, the, the yearning for, for what God had promised and, um, and the eventual joy and celebration when that thing does come, which we see here with um, both Simeon and Anna. So an example that we can take um, straight away is um, to not be discouraged when uh, it doesn't seem like things that God had promised us are coming to pass. You know, in your life, you, you've probably got things, words that God has spoken over you or things that you're hoping for, things that... Um, things that you know that God will fulfill in your life and you're not necessarily not necessarily seeing those things and it can be really hard sometimes when um, when there is that word over your life or when uh, there is something that we're waiting for and you're not not seeing the breakthrough that you really want and an instant encouragement for us here is um, we see just the the relief that um, that that Simeon and Anna both had um, when they finally saw God come through. And it really is testimony to the, the faithfulness of God. He remains faithful even when our circumstances don't seem like it. And you see it in what Simeon says. He says, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. Because of course the promise to Simeon was, you will not die uh, until you see uh, the Messiah come. And um, he knew. He knew that this was God now dismissing him, saying, you know, you've seen what I promised that you will see. Um, he says, for your, my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all people. Uh, 
Um, and of course, Jesus' mother and father, you know, Mary and Joseph, they were taken aback by this. Um, but this is something that God had been speaking to Simeon and Anna about um, for years and years and years, for their whole lives. And um, that's really significant to me, the, that sense of the, the, the secret life of prayer that they both must have had to know instantly when they saw Jesus that this was the Messiah. This is something that daily, uh, certainly for Anna, daily, they were praying for, they were, um, they were searching for, they were waiting for. And something significant I find as well here is that actually when, when you're waiting for something, for God to do something, when he, when he finally does that thing, it is not the end. It's not, uh, it's not brought everything to completion. You know, God is in the business of doing new things constantly. And uh, he, uh, there's, always more, there's always more of him to discover. You know, there's always something new in your Christian walk to discover about God. So take, you know, Ellie and I finally getting married. You know, it wasn't that on that day we got married and suddenly everything's done, that's it, complete. No, quite the opposite. When we got married, that was the start of something new, something beautiful. It was only the beginning, you know, and it's always like that with God. When he does something, when you get that breakthrough you've been praying for, when he does that new thing, when that word comes to pass, that's not the end. That's only the beginning. So I really want to encourage you today, whatever it is you're waiting for, whatever it is you're praying for, you're seeking God for, is to keep doing that. Have the perseverance that Simeon and Anna both had. Uh, and and be ready to celebrate. But remember that that's not the end. Remember that when God opens a door, um, he's not just opened that door for you to stand there and enjoy the open door. He actually wants you to walk through into that new thing that he's, that new thing that he's promised. Amen.